Morning, guys. Welcome to Coffee Chat. Mm, mm -hmm. Wow, delicious. Guys, first thing, right off the tip top, today is Memorial Day here in the United States where we pay tribute to those people that have actually gone out there and served this country in the military and all the branches thereof. And of course, you know, and I even want to throw in those guys that are out there doing emergency services, but primarily it's for the military that have actually gone out there and have really just sacrificed so, so much serving and some paying the ultimate price so that we can enjoy the liberties that we enjoy here in this country. And I just wanna say thank you. We love you so, so much. Now, guys, this weekend was a humdinger. On Saturday there, we ended up having like a big blustery storm and we had to go get out some stuff and all this and that. And Sunday came along, didn't get my, you know, my sugar on Sunday done and all that kind of stuff because we were writing up things in the house and things like that. But um, we sure are wanting to get back to it come next Sunday, that's for sure. But that's why I missed it. Now, having said all that, guys, I'm reading an article today, and this is one that's coming from The Hedge. I'm going to post it right in here because the stats are going to blow your mind. This is not just bad. It's actually horrific. What's going on here in the United States is truly something else. In fact, the division between rich and poor has gotten the widest gap it probably has ever seen. And in fact, according to stats from the Federal Reserve, 10% of the richest Americans own 93% of the stocks and things like that. And in fact, right now, you know, the, 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 the majority of that, all that, like, you know, less than I think, what, two and a half percent of, you know, the rest of Americans own, you know, like a decent amount of stock or stuff like that. These guys, 10% 10 10 of the entire, the wealthiest people own 93% of all the stocks traded on the market here in the U.S. Isn't that mind bending? Now on top of that, get this, another statistic in the article that they were pointing out is that over 42 million American households are utilizing food stamps weekly. That is mind bending, wow absolutely horrific and they were ultimately getting down that it said something like 40 percent of american households would be classified as the working poor yep the working poor that is a very sick and sad statistic in a country that literally people will say well it's the wealthiest country on earth the world's greatest free market economy and all this and this and that but the opportunity is being stripped away from the average person. Why? Because they don't have the expendable cash to go out and invest in stocks and equities and be in positions to see gains coming through and stuff like that. And, and the reason for that, of course, is because they've been inflating the system like absolutely obscene and literally pulling the cash out of our pockets by the fistfuls, by destroying the purchasing power. And that's why we've got to just clean house, literally. In this election cycle, we got to clean the house and get people in there that are going to be supporting people like you and I, the average working folk that are going out there doing a job and end up being the working poor, that is that should never ever be. You should be able, the American dream should be at, at within reach of most people, not just a few people at the upper echelon sitting at the top. And this is where, guys, I believe this digital asset space represents an opportunity for that to happen because it's one of the first instances where we get to front run the institutions. And that's why it seems like they've been against it for so long. But now look what's happening, guys. What's happening now is you're seeing legislation getting through, of course, with that financial innovation and technology for the 21st Century Act and all that where this distributed ledger technology is probably going to be measured you know managed by the CFTC and not the SEC because look with the whole system the way it's been especially trying to get in on the ground floor on a lot of projects that might show some great promise well you had to be an accredited investor that means you had to have a net worth of a million dollars liquid over and above your principal residence and stuff like that and uh, even at that point, you know, it was difficult to get some of this private equity because you had to buy it in huge chunks. Well, now, you know, you got the SEC out there wanting to raise that threshold to 10 million, make it even that much more difficult for folks to be able to go out there and, and do this kind of stuff. 
And that's the way it's been. It's just been like, you know, if you're wealthy and you've already got money, well, we're going to make sure that you get you get to keep it and you get to stay up there. But those trying to crawl or claw their way out of the bucket, it's like the other crabs are hauling them back down. And when you think about it, it is the backbone of this economy. And what we've enjoyed has come from the sweat of those people that have gone out there and literally been, you know, producing all the stuff, doing the industry, going out there, creating these opportunities, things like that. Wow, I'll tell you. And this is where there's a big, big disparity. Now, I am not for all this UBI and universal basic income or anything like that. And I absolutely encourage entrepreneurship to the nth degree. But you got to make it fair. We need a fair and level playing field. We need opportunities to be available for the average folks. And like I say, that's where I see this digital asset space providing those opportunities. Look, Judy and I worked 25 plus, well, for me, it was like 35 years, you know, and I was in finance, 25 of those with the government and taxation and stuff like that. But needless to say, work, 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 practically since I was a teenager onward, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, at the end of it, yeah, I got a pension. Now, sure, it's not a lead balloon, but it is no golden parachute. I'll tell you what, you could not live on the pension. You would have to, you know, have supplemental income to make it and stuff like that. Well, God, praise God, because it was when we were going through all this whole thing that Judy and I were trying to secure, you know, the purchasing power of our savings, couldn't find gold and silver, and we fell into this digital asset space. And I'll tell you what. It revolutionized our lives. But that opportunity would not have been available save for this space right here. And it changed our lives. That's why I get out there and I'm so positive about it because I believe the opportunity is there that it that other people's lives can still be changed. Now, yes, you want to go out there like we did and do your research and understand what risk tolerance you have and all this and that. And, you know, you got to get out there and make up your own mind. But for us, the way I look at it is where is the future going? And you had better believe this digital asset space is a big part of it. Look, how many people were poo-pooing it all along, all along, that now are singing its praises, like up there on Wall Street, like on the political stage and stuff like that? For years, we heard them downplaying it. Oh, it's rat poison squared. It's this, it's this, it's that. Now they're out there gobbling it up like no tomorrow. And don't kid yourself, guys. They were out there buying it up when it was really, really low and trying to scare the dickens out of most folks to stay away from it and stuff like that. And I was... I got victimized that by myself. You know, I knew about Bitcoin right from practically day one because of the job that I did. And especially in 2010, 11, I knew about it then. And Judy was saying, hey, should you, you think we should get? And I was saying, are you kidding me? This is what it's only for, you know, drug dealers, tax cheaters, and, you know, deviants and stuff like that. And said, nope, 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 we're not going to touch it. And that was a big time mistake. But you know why? Because I was drinking the Kool-Aid. And that's the narrative they were selling. Now you're literally seeing, you know, these ETFs mainstream. And you're watching these big, big, massive trading houses. The ones that we have been conditioned to so-called trust with this market and stuff like that. And they're diving in head first, just gobbling up like, you know, pigs in a trough. I'll tell you what. Guys, they've known it all along, and I absolutely believe that. Now, having said that, do I think that some of these other, you know, ecosystems have greater opportunity and greater potential that are being fudded now? You had better believe it. And that's the way I think about XRP. I have never seen an ecosystem get so much FUD. And you know what? That fear, uncertainty, and doubt, for those who don't know, but that just reinforces my belief in what's coming down the road that gives me what that's confluence for me right there i'll tell you what but guys when you see these kind of statistics i mean 40 percent of american households are the working poor that is obscene and it's only going to get worse guys it's i really do believe they are just pumping this thing like crazy until the balloon literally burst and then, of course, the people are going to be just screaming. They'll be they're willing to accept anything at that point. And that's where I believe, you know, the same people that lit the fire will be the ones coming, showing up with the hose, saying, we got the answer. We can put it out. Da, 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 da. And sure enough, 
that's where they're going to kind of push a lot of this narrative in there. And at that point, people will accept practically anything, won't they? When you're in that kind of desperation, you will accept practically anything. And that's why we all say, we all call it, hey, a pandemic and everything, right? Because it makes no sense, it makes zero sense. Here you have the wide world, the whole economy brought to a screeching halt. You know, no manufacturing, no service business, no distributing, no this, no that. And yet the world went on probably one of the biggest secular bull markets that we have ever seen. And who pushed it, guys? It was being pumped up by central banks around the wide world. And you think that they did not know what the inflationary result was gonna be? Oh, that they're just reacting to this happenstance? Not on your life. They knew 101%, you can be absolutely assured. So the guys, think about that. When you're listening to all the narratives that are coming down the pike here, and this is what they're telling you, and all the FUD, think about that. Put that into your equation, and you start to use your critical thinking of what's coming down the road, and put yourself in a position where you're not a victim. You're not a victim, where you actually can literally benefit in a way that most people, most people are actually kept in the dark. They're completely oblivious, and it's not that you know, most people are bad. No, it's just that they are just kept so in the dark. But this is where, you know, you get out there, you tell people as much as you can. And if they just don't want to listen, there's not much you can do about that. But the way I kind of look at it is, hey, prepare for what's coming down the road. Look, it doesn't hurt to have a few extra things in your pantry, does it? Doesn't hurt to have a few extra supplies that you would normally use, does it? Doesn't hurt to actually try to preserve the purchasing power of your money and look at opportunities where it could actually grow in a and change your world and put you in a position where you're not a victim I'll tell you what I mean for Judy and I the way I kind of look at it is this and a lot of us can't be whales but I'll tell you what I can follow their behavior even if I'm not listening to their advice and I can stack my pennies next to their dollars that's kind of how I look at it well guys I'll tell you that's what I see now I'm gonna put a link to that article so you can read it right into the description of this video because it is mind-boggling these statistics when you think about them but guys big 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 things are happening and we don't want to be the people on the other end of that on the other side of that stick you know being the ones that are literally being beat down guys we got to get these people out of those offices and get people that support you and i in and on top of that position ourselves so that we can actually weather these storms and come out right on the other side and i sure hope that's going to be you well guys until later on today when we have a fabulous video for you have a great one and take care